everybody, it's Dave, Blue Jacket 66 here for a quick video. I uh, just want to talk a little bit about uh, my trip to the Dallas for the Dallas Card Show over the weekend. Uh, had a great time. Uh, kind of want to talk a little thoughts about the camaraderie among fellow YouTubers, a little bit about the show itself, the vibe at the show, what I saw, and uh, some of the pickups uh, that I had there. So I headed down, I worked... Um, Let's see, I work Friday all day, uh, get off work about 7 p.m., drove home, took a while, and slept for a few hours, and uh, got up early on Saturday morning at 3 a.m., took a quick flight out of St. Louis for Dallas-Fort Worth uh, Airport, got in there, uh, the flight was at 6, got in at uh, around 8 or so, Mike, uh, baseball collector, picked me up along with Bart, uh, the PSA card guy and uh we headed off to the show i had never met bart before uh fantastic guy check out his channel bart the psa card guy uh, we just had a, a a great time together uh he gave me uh one of these challenge coins from his military unit his security specialist and uh, uh that's kind of a big deal i think it's really special they you don't just give those out to everyone, and uh, I appreciate him uh, giving me one. So uh, I really insisted on getting a coffee on the way. I was really dragging from getting up so early, but we got to the show and uh, just had a great first day there. The The show was really crowded. I would check out, you know, Dallas Card Show 2021 most recent updates, and you'll see tons of people, tons of videos, and uh, you'll see footage from the floor. I didn't really want to do that I'm kind of lazy with stuff like that but just walking around showing stuff isn't my thing probably should have to give this this video a little better vibe obviously but uh, there's lots of great videos out there and a lot of people walking around who have uh, cameramen and producers and uh, uh, a lot of help there who put together fantastic videos I kind of want to just do a little bit of a show and tell but it was really busy the first day we went Saturday and Sunday Saturday uh, really there for most of the entire show uh, had, uh, day one, a couple, uh, pickups day one, um, and, uh, we kind of split apart, you know, we'd walked around, did our own thing, and, you know, who do I meet up with, uh, Andy, she blinded me with refractors, one of my favorite YouTubers, and the nicest guy in the world, hung with him a little bit, Josh, rated rookie, uh, also fantastic guy, nice, nicest guy in the community, um, but for the most part, kind of wandered around the show itself and then texting back and forth, hey, where are you? Meeting up from time to time. Certainly met up for lunch, had a good lunch together, then kind of back to the show. And then uh, after the show, uh, Mike uh, and I did a little uh, uh, roundtable uh, meeting with uh, uh, Dr. Beckett uh, regarding, um, I'm not sure, quite sure what it was regarding, but it was a privilege to be there and... Uh, met some great YouTubers and, and content providers and uh, uh, those that are really into the podcasting and YouTubing and uh, the social media aspect of it. So that was a lot of fun. Got home uh, late that night, uh, not too late, uh, but pretty late for me because I was pretty exhausted and uh, uh, had a few beers, chatted a little bit, and most importantly, checked out Mike's uh, the Beast looked at a, his fantastic Hall of Fame uh, card collection, which is likely second to none. If it's second to anything, it's not second to more than one or two. And all his fantastic PSA slab uh, collections. Met his family, of course. <laughs> great, great family. I don't know. I don't know what to say. They're just great uh, family. His wife and his kids and uh, his pup dog, uh, Norman. Next day we got up, uh, Mike had someone uh, uh, coming over uh, from Sports Card Nation, uh, and so Bart and I headed out. I just wanted to go for a few hours, a long drive, long drive from his house to the, uh, to the show. Uh, I would say the show in general uh, was extremely crowded. I would say Saturday and Sunday, extremely crowded on Saturday. Really elbow to elbow, full aisle. Sunday, probably the volume, I thought was maybe down 30% or, or so. Uh, a little easier to get around at what and whatnot. All walks of life, male, female. I would 
uh, young or old, uh, you know, it's, it's not, it, this isn't stamp collecting and it's not coins. This is not an old man's game. There's a lot of people like me who are older vintage collectors, a lot of people that have been in this for 40, 50 years. And, uh, but I would say the median age is, you know, thirties or so young kids going around. Yeah. And, uh, Young kids walking around with their cases full of cards. Yeah, there there is a few of them, but let's be honest about this. Ten year olds don't bankroll and don't have thousands and thousands of dollars of cards. That's nonsense. That's not a kid at a table. He's by himself. He had one of those boxes, and the the uh, uh, dealer was admiring him for. You must know a lot about cards. You got some nice cards, and the kid said, "No, they're all my dad's." And his dad left him there too. Uh, do a deal <laughs> and that's probably what it's like for most of these young kids not that there aren't 15 year olds and olders that are uh, wealthier than you and I and have made their way th uh, uh, through the card uh, process and done well but uh, I think these little kids that they talk about banking it mm, let's we're adults we know better than that for the most part um, I saw some trading going on. I saw a lot of selling and buying going on, a lot of cash deals. Uh, what overall, I would say that the dealers were really, really nice. Uh, they engaged you. The days in the of the 80s and 90s were car dealers sitting around eating their cheeseburger and watching their uh, little TV over in the corner while the wife knits is over. Uh, dealers are engaging. Uh, they want you to come to the table. They greet you with smiles. They ask if they can help you. Don't overly bother you unnecessarily. And I thought we're willing to uh, deal and uh, uh, negotiate on their prices. Not one thing did I buy that they did uh, uh, they not come down on. Uh, and there were several things that I, they didn't want to come to my price, and, but were very, very gracious about it. And we shook hands and you know, it was this, uh, the deals as well as the no deals were equal, equally, you know, great and satisfying to me. Um, I did not see a lot of big time trading going on in the after hours, but maybe I just wasn't in the right thing. I saw a lot of people uh, set up with their entourages and their cameras, and that's what they're all about. Uh, so uh, they had a great time as well. Um Sunday, it was a little bit slower. Again, we just went in to go make some quick hits. I uh, Thankfully, I saw Andy again. She blinded me with the refractors. Josh wasn't there, but we had had, uh, you know, some lunch the day before and dinner uh, the day before uh, as well. Uh, that night, we went back to Mike's, had pizza. Uh, Dave's midlife card crisis came over, and uh, um, Bart and Mike and and he uh, jawed around, which is the best part of it. The best part of it is hanging with your friends. That's by far the best part of it. And that's why I can't wait to go to the cash, uh, the Nationals to hang out. And uh, I'll bring Caden to the National, hopefully. Uh, there was a, just a ton of Pokemon at this show. Uh, there were several large, or at least one very large room that was only Pokemon. And there was a lot of Pokemon out on the floor. I would say if I had to generalize, I would say that a majority of what I saw, well, without question, a majority of what I saw was modern and, and leading the pack with the modern was uh, the basketball, within, then baseball and football, probably vintage, a smaller amount, but there was some good vintage out there. I was absolutely thrilled within 10 minutes of walking in the door to come to a case of vintage cars that had, you know, a run of the 53 through 55 stall Myers. It had a Frederick photo Babe Ruth in it, and it had my dream card uh, that uh, the owner and the dealer was happy enough to get out and let me hold, and that is the uh, mascot da dog food um, Mickey Mantle, of which I'm only aware of two of them in existence. And uh, uh, the first one I sold, uh, th uh, I don't know, three or four years ago for, say, I don't know, 35000 a little higher grade one sold last year uh, for a little over $90,000. Uh, worth every penny. Ultimately rare. Mickey Mantle. Big, cool card. Uh, so that was that was a big thrill for me. But did see a fair amount of uh, vintage as, as well. Uh, I think this show really satisfied all collectors. There was a, even a room that had a lot of comic book and that type of comic art in it. 
Uh, I even saw some sneakers. No, nothing about sneakers. I wear them, but uh, saw some sneakers as well. So I hope, really hope the uh, the national uh, broadens itself as well. I, I think perhaps it won't. And the reason being is I know they sell out their tables so far in advance. So that'll be a shame if, if some of the... Uh, the, you know, the National tends to be overloaded with uh, a lot of memorabilia, uh, etc. And maybe that's not quite where the hobby's at right now. Uh, and I'd love to see a lot more Pokemon there for my son when he goes. You know, this, this Dallas show was just fantastic. And uh, I hope the National uh, is as diversified as these shows are. Because I think the diversification for... All collectors is extremely important. So, again, the best part of it was staying with Mike, baseball collector, his household, his hospitality, and you know what? Uh, talking, telling stories, telling personal stories, um, uh, like we've been brothers forever. That's that's a, that's the truth. Uh, and equally so when I meet up with, you know, Josh and Andy, it's so comfortable and it's so real as it will be with, uh, you all when we meet up at the Nationals. Certainly looking forward to, you know, to meet, seeing all of you, uh, there as many as possible. I highly recommend it. I think it's going to be a go. So if you're wondering if it's going to be a go, just you can always cancel your flight. You can always cancel a hotel should there be something that happens. But I think it's, uh, I was, I'm very bullish on it being a go, whereas uh, uh, as of two months ago, I thought it was highly unlikely. So thankfully things have turned. So, hey, how about we look at some of my pickups from the Dallas Card Show? Um, I'm really happy, really, really happy with it. So let's let's take a look. Okay, I realize that was a little long-winded. Sorry about that. Sometimes I just get to talking and there it goes. And I also get a little opinionated and stuff. Sorry about that. Let's get to some of these uh, pickups for the Dallas show. I think beforehand, uh, waiting for me when I got home, was a couple <coughs> items that I think are worthy of showing. This is an unopened box of 93 Topps Finest. Baseball. Yeah, that's where it all started the inserts and the shiny cards so I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do with it I mean when you get to my age how long are you gonna put the stuff away I don't, I don't know that might be something that might be fun to open this summer we'll see I think it's one refractor per box and uh, I don't think those are renowned for being completely caked and stuck together but you never know it all I guess it all depends on how it's stored um, I sold uh, a couple really big Herbert cards when the market was at its high in February, March, and um, made some significant profit. Not that that's why I had bought them. I had bought them because I'd watched them last fall, thought he would look really, really good, bought a couple high-end Herberts, but when the market got crazy, I thought, yeah, I don't love them that much. But in the interim, uh, I still like to have a couple of Herberts in my collection because he looks like a great player. So I picked up this, um, the Panini, uh, the Donner's Optic, the Wave, numbered to 199. So that's, I love Optic. Actually, many of the Optic cards I like better than Prism. Here's another Herbert. This is the prism, the disco prism. So I have a few Herberts now. Um, so I think I'm good on him for the time being. Okay, on to the show. Uh, kind of, I think I'm gonna get these kind of in the order of how I bought them. Uh, first thing I got was this Bowman Chrome uh, Mega Box Bobby Witt rookie. Uh, you know, my internet wasn't working really good in there, and I'm not one to just be completely obsessed with comps because I kind of buy cards I like, and I probably overpaid a little bit for this one, but that's okay. He's a royal. 
I am a Royals fan. Um, you know, I got this. I was really excited about this. I got this for my son. I saw it. There was tons of Pokemon there, as I mentioned. 2019 Sun and Moon. Tag Team GX All-Stars. There's Charizard. Um, I guess this is a uh, pretty sought-after card. It just looked fantastic. Um, so I got this for my son. I will give him uh, that probably when we have his graduation party next month. But uh, that was sweet. And if you're a Pokemon collector, I think Dallas is the place to be probably far over the national. Got this on my day one there. 1932 Sonella Margarine. It's German, type three, Babe Ruth. These are really increasing in popularity and value as are all roofs, but this was always a, one of the quote unquote affordable roofs, always has been, and it's becoming, it's leaving that arena just like all roots are leaving that stratosphere but i love it love it love that uh believe it or not got a couple basketball cards here's the mosaic mosaic rookie autographs john morant 10 sticker signature but still dazzling card and I got another Morant when I was there, his, his silver prism. I got those, I was just there uh, Saturday and Sunday and really got that this really late Sunday afternoon and got my big prize, my big score of the show. Sorry, that keeps... Also, late Sunday, Andy was there with me, and we laid down some cash, and he had a huge deal. Can't wait for his uh, big show acquisition, but this was mine. I, this is one of the reasons, one of the things I was looking for at the show. I wasn't looking anything in particular, but one of the things I did want, I saw this. I saw a raw one that was pretty hefty, and then I saw this one really in the same case, and just was not going to leave without it. The 2018 Panini Kaboom. Mahomes in a 10. Hopefully these Kabooms are going to be the sought after card. And hopefully Mahomes goes ahead and leads, uh, leads the Chiefs, my Kansas City Chiefs, to a long winning and prosperous career. So there that is, the 2018 Kaboom, Patrick Mahomes, which will probably uh, abruptly end my buying, presumably for anything at least major, until the national, and then we'll go from there. So thanks for watching. Um, a little too much talking and not enough card showing, but I hope you enjoy what I saw. It was a great weekend, and uh, there's another one in July. I won't be going to that uh, because of the National, and if there was no National, I would definitely be there, and we'll see what happens this fall. So you guys have a great weekend, and I'll talk to you later.